Hello, Read 585, and welcome to week nine. This week we are talking about beating the odds and schools who do that. And hopefully you can be a change agent for your school and help uh, others at your site beat the odds as well. This is part one of your lecture, so I'm going to do all of our introductory information and go over assignments for the week. So first, getting started with good news. I am in need of some good news. No one has emailed me recently with good news to share, so if you haven't done so already, please go ahead and do that. I know a few of you mentioned on the Survey Monkey that you love the good news, but you haven't contributed contributed yet, so this is me telling you to contribute. I love hearing from you about that. I guess I can share some good news with you. Today is actually my birthday, and um, we did enjoy two days of nearly 50 degree weather, which was outstanding. However, today we are in the teens. We are getting hit with seven to nine inches of snow, which led to another snow day. This makes snow day number eight. So I got to enjoy sleeping in and working from home today, which was very nice. Uh, what else is going on? I also just booked some flights for July to Spain and Portugal for a nine day summer hiatus. I'm looking forward to that. And I won $130 last week. My staff did a biggest loser competition and I was the biggest loser. Loser. Yay. All right. So I have lots of non-professional news to share. Hopefully you can share, you know, anything you would like personal or professional with us next week. All right. Some upcoming assignments for you this week. You have two things to read. The first reading assignment is for everyone to complete, and it comes from Chapter 7 of the California Framework. I know we are moving away from the California Framework. However, this chapter is on universal access to the language arts curriculum, and I feel like it will be beneficial to you as you make your recommendation and your plan in Part 3 of Assignment 3, the SWOT analysis. I think it helps you think about uh, different procedures to have have in place for your school site and creating the change that they need. So please read that. Then you may choose from one of the following articles. The first is written by Patricia Cunningham, who is best known for making words, but it is titled High Poverty Schools That Beat the Odds, and it comes from the reading teacher. It's a quick little article that has a lot of information in it. I think she outlines 12. Uh, different ways to ramp up the educational experience of your students. And then the second article geared more toward the secondary level is titled, I'm Not Stupid, How Assessment Drives Inappropriate Reading Instruction. And we actually read this in Read 516, so you may have already seen this one before. We do have the discussion forum back this week. I know you enjoyed a few weeks break from it to focus on your larger projects. At least that's what you told me in the survey monkey. But we have the uh, discussion forum back this week and your prompt is to think about the readings mainly the chapter seven from the ELA framework, as it discusses how instruction should meet the needs of all students. It also reviews the current groupings for students based on CST. Um, essentially, it just groups kids, benchmark, strategic, intensive, which can apply to you know non-CST um, environments as well. And then you have a choice between those two articles. So with those readings in mind, and having done your data analysis, how can you include the meeting, meeting the needs of all students in your action plan? And how is it supported with what you read from chapter seven? So we're really getting ready to finish up assignment three. So I want you to be thinking now about the plan piece. You've identified hopefully strengths and weaknesses, opportunities and threats. And now what are you going to do about it? What is your recommendation? So think about these readings and what you can glean from them to plan an effective program. 
And then the second question, um, both the choice articles discuss differentiating instruction to meet the needs of students, but there are different um, ways. So what is one takeaway from the articles that you might be able to add to your action plan and why? And you can even think about assignment four coming up where you're going to provide a professional development. Is there something in one of these articles that you think your staff could benefit from? Maybe a different approach or strategy or technique that will help you be a more effective school and beat the odds. So for assignments, that is the discussion forum. That is an assignment for this week. And then this is the last week to get your feedback to your colleagues for assignment to the professional documents, your cover letter, resume, thank you letter. You must post the feedback by March 22nd, you will receive a participation grade for doing this using the participation rubric. Note that no um, late assignments will be submitted with exception to the weekly discussion posts, so please be timely in getting those up. All right, the survey monkey I gave to you last week. I have had eight respondents so far who have had great feedback. You know, little kinds of easy changes I can make, like uh, putting the dates on the weeks in the titanium. So that way, when I put up a new week, you're not panicking because um, you clearly see by the dates on the top that it is a new week. So that was an easy fix for me to make. Other suggestions you have are definitely welcome. So thank you to the eight people who have responded so far. But there are still 12 more of you out there who can give me your thoughts and opinions. All right, the assignment number two timeline, all of the professional documents are up there, so now it is time to give the feedback to your two teammates. So a lot of you have groups of three, but some have groups of four or five. So you just need to give feedback to two people in your group, and that needs to be uploaded to your wiki project page. I will walk you through that in just a second. So your feedback to colleagues will be scored on quantity and quality for a participation grade. So let me show you exactly where to put this now. All right, here is our class wiki in all of its glory. If you need to access it, you should be able to just go to wikispaces.com and log in and then find it in your wiki section. Just by going here, you should be able to bring it up. Um, so, this is the home page. There we are. Here is the template for feedback to use for assignment two, so please use that. Now, I typically go to the project page here. You can also use, you know, this or this. Um, but I believe that my site looks a lot different than your site. I've heard others of you have gone to pages here or all pages here and have been able to get to your project page that way. So you may have to go about it that way. But if you go to your project page, let's say I'm in group one, here are my team's professional documents. So I'm gonna turn on the editing and I know recently this wasn't uh, functioning as hoped, but here we go. So, um, you know, I want to give uh, Stephanie my feedback here. So I'm going to go um, to file and then I'm going to upload a file. Um, where is the file that I want to upload? Uh, here it is. Feedback for Stephanie from Just. There it is. All right. So it is now uploading my file of feedback. And if I click on that, it um, put it right there. So there is my feedback for Stephanie from Jess. Put right in. Uh, make sure you hit save so it stays there. I am not going to save that there because it's already there. So I'm actually going to remove it and just cancel out of this. But that is uh, how you go about 
putting in your feedback. It makes it significantly easier for me to find and grade this as well as for your teammates to see your feedback. So I've already put in these headings, you know, feedback for Jessica, feedback for Stephanie. So you just need to go in and, and put your feedback there. It looks like this group has already been able to do that, which is great. I know the wiki had a bit of a technical bug, but their IT team was great in helping me get that fixed. So by the end of this week, you must have feedback to two of your teammates posted. All right, here is the link for our wiki page, our wiki space. You can also just go to wikispaces.com, log in, and it should be one of your wiki pages. The feedback is due this week, and then May 3rd is when final drafts of your professional documents are due, hopefully using feedback from your teammates in order to complete that. The assignment three timeline. So you should be well aware that there are three parts to the this assignment because part one and part two are done. I'm currently working on grading part two so I can have that back to you in a timely manner. And then part three, the SWOT analysis and plan is due March 29th. So currently on um, Titanium is a screencast titled, What is a SWOT analysis? That goes back over some of the readings about the SWOT analysis. Um, with this screencast, it is done by Dr. Bowers from a previous semester. I want you to note a few things. First of all, we will not be doing feedback to peers on their SWOTs. So disregard that part of the screencast. And then we will not be doing group presentations. We're going to be doing individual presentations instead for the professional development. So you can just disregard those pieces in the what is a SWOT analysis PowerPoint. Now, with part three, there are two critical pieces. The first is the SWOT narrative. So you need to have a paragraph at least for each of those areas, strengths, weaknesses, opportunities, threats. You're welcome to make a chart <clears throat> with a bulleted list for those, but you then need to add narrative as well. And then the second piece is you need to write a recommendation that addresses um, specific student needs, structures that need changing, goals, staffing, communication, how you're going to monitor the plan. So there is a screencast for what is a SWOT analysis, and then there is also a screencast on completing part three of the assignment to view. Let me show you where to find those. All right, so here on our lovely Titanium site, you'll see under assignment three is the screencast from Dr. Bowers, what is a SWOT analysis? And then here is a screencast on assignment three, part three. I'm also putting it in week nine right here, screencast, what is a SWOT analysis? And then here's the little disclaimer about uh, the pieces you don't really need to pay attention to. All right, and the next assignment I wanted you to start thinking about is assignment number four. It is the staff development presentations, which are due week 13. The materials for this assignment were recently made available on Titanium. However, um, I looked at your feedback. I had a question specifically asking, do you want to do group or individual? And the data shows that 88% prefer an individual presentation. So we are going to be doing individual presentations. This means I need to update the assignment materials to reflect this change. Essentially, it will be all of the same pieces. You will just be doing it as an individual instead of a group, which I think is actually going to be more helpful to you professionally because hopefully it will be something that you can develop for your staff or a future staff that you can readily take and use. And I know when I took this course, we did individual presentations and my presentation I was able to deliver to my staff and also include it in my portfolio. So I think it will be actually more beneficial to you in the long run to do this individually. And I'm glad 88% of you agree. So once the presentations are complete, though, we are going to add the piece of providing feedback to others on their presentations. So we will, we will be doing that. 
All right, one person at least has asked, uh, you know, where are we going for the rest of this semester? So we are more than halfway done at this point, which is exciting, and, you know, thinking ahead as to where we are going. So I just wanted to quickly address the upcoming weeks. So next week, we start a new unit, and this unit is focused on professional development. So week 10, that is our topic, and then that is when your whole SWAT is dupe. You know, part three would be the new piece. Week 11 is a spring break. Exciting. Week 12, we're doing more on PD. Week 13, we're talking about approaches to PD, and that is when assignment number four, your uh, presentation is going to be due. So please start taking a look at those materials and thinking about your presentation and what topic you may want to um, provide some training on. Then in week 14, we move on to unit four, which is on instructional coaching. I know there are still many questions out there about coaching. We haven't gotten there yet, but that will be coming in unit four. Week 14, we're talking about principles for literacy coaches. Week 15, we're talking about coaching strategies. That's when your professional documents are due. Week 16, more on coaching, and we're closing up the course. And then week 17 is finals week. That is when assignment number five, the coaching assignment, where you are analyzing video clips of different teachers and providing some kind of like real life coaching is due. So you've collected your data and you're working on analyzing it. Now what? So now is the time in the process when you need to make instructional decisions based on data. What is or are the greatest needs for your staff? And once you've determined what those are, you will either need to provide professional development to the whole staff or maybe you need to take a more individualized approach and do some coaching at the one-on-one -on -one level or with a particular grade level team or group of teachers or content area group. So you need to create the plan. Once you've determined your site's weaknesses and opportunities, you want to decide on one maybe two focus areas. And I know this has been a challenge at my current school site. The principal has really wanted to tackle everything all at once. And as a result, we haven't done anything in depth. It hasn't had continuity. It's just been the sporadic, you know, drive by PD on so many different things. And it's been really overwhelming for the teachers because they don't feel like they're making any progress in any of the many areas. So it's very important to prioritize just like you do with your students when you give, you know, a gamut of diagnostic assessments, you prioritize what is the main thing holding this student back and then you, you know, design instruction for that. So same thing with your school site. You know, look at the data and think about what is the biggest area of need to focus on. Then you will need to determine what you want your anticipated outcomes to be. So in the article we read where we talked about the importance of determining a goal based on pedagogy, you know, not a goal based on state test scores, but a goal based on improving the teaching and learning of children. So do you want to increase fluency? If so, maybe you give a training on Rosinski's multidimensional fluency scale. Do you want to really focus on academic vocabulary because you have a population of a lot of English language learners and that is really impeding their you know, success on these various um, things? Or do you need to increase basic skills students so they can move on to English 100 or, or whatever it is? So you need to think about your anticipated outcome. What do you want to see as a result from your efforts so that you can determine an objective? Again, just like with teaching, you are doing backwards planning. What is the assessment going to be for my students? And then, you know, what from there, how am I going to plan instruction to get them there? So think of the ultimate outcome and then plan backwards. So what objectives do we need to do? So for instance, with fluency, what types of fluency instruction um, will need to happen? Or for academic vocabulary, do you want to bring in Marzano's six steps? For common core basic skills instructors, maybe you could do some sort of mentoring activity. So what objective or means are you going to use to get to your outcome?
Measuring your progress is always very important. And I feel like this is a step that um, gets ignored often. You're so excited about jumping in to, you know, work on this, you know, new technique or strategy or tool or whatever it is you're getting your teachers on board to use that you forget to continually monitor, you know, the effectiveness of how it's going. And the Fisher Frey article was great as it, um, constantly revisited the challenges of the teachers in that first you know year six months of implementation so are you going to have formative assessments every six weeks to measure fluency could you have science and social studies teachers collect you know writing samples to to measure their use of academic vocabulary are you going to have um, student work samples gathered every three weeks for your basic skills folks? You know, what is going to be the measure of your progress and <clears throat> how are you going to ensure that it is being um, collected consistently, not just at the end of the year, because by that point it's too late um, to modify your course of action. So that brings us to how to implement a professional development plan, which is the big idea behind assignment four. So professional development should be occurring over the course of the year. And this is very hard to plan um, because you don't want to just do a one-time drive-by thing. I know many of us have probably gone to you know one isolated section, did a lot of great learning, but then didn't implement it right away, forgot about it it wasn't ever brought up again or revisited. So it's very important when you make a professional development plan that you really identify that big focus and you develop um, many layers along the way so that the professional development is ongoing throughout the year. Even better, if you can find a way to make it job embedded as well, that will help. So how can I ensure that teachers understand the plan? So you need to have a way to communicate the plan to them and to invest them in the plan. How should I chunk instruction or professional development so that faculty are successful? So thinking about the end of the year, is there some learning we should do at the end of the year to prepare us for our before the year starts training? Are you gonna have them maybe do some sort of professional readings over the summer to prepare them? You know, what makes sense for your professional development plan to focus on first? So what are you going to get in motion first? How are you going to monitor that? How are you going to then give them uh, development on being effective with that first piece and then introducing the next piece? How are you going to be sharing results? How do we celebrate growth at the end? Undoubtedly, if you are doing focused professional development on something, there should be growth in some way. It might not show up on a state test score right away, but it should be apparent in student work or classroom-based assessments. And then what's going to happen year two? Are we just going to drop this and move on to something else? Or how are we going to keep this focus alive and maybe refine and hone it and do it at a more sophisticated level in the second year? So here is actually a way that I framed professional development when I was a literacy specialist. So it became very apparent that school-wide our writing program needed more structure and we needed to do more specific assessments, be looking at the student work and be very focused on developing high quality writing. So, you know, this is just a rough sample of, of the work we did. I actually developed a task force uh, with one teacher per grade level and we met, you know, several times um, starting I think in April probably April of the year prior to talk about where do we need to go as a school with writing, coming up with you know ideas and structures and systems. And then over the summer we worked on the PD and then started our PD uh, in the in August before the new school year. So this was the you know outcome we came up with here. All grades will conduct eight cycles of writing, each with a pretest and a post-test, so we're embedding assessment in our cycles of writing. The pretest will be scored by the teacher, but post-tests will be collaboratively scored or have two graders beside the teacher. Data from pre- and post-tests will be discussed in data talks. For the first implementation of each genre, only rows one and two and three of our writing rubric will be used. Then for the second implementation, we're gonna add in conventions. 
Upon the conclusion of each cycle, students will participate in a publishing party or another celebratory event. The writing task force will also hold staff trainings throughout the year to develop teachers in implementing each component of the writing block. So a lot. We basically had nothing for writing. So first we started by making a kind of school-wide pacing guide for writing. Keep in mind this was pre-Common Core, so now it would be a lot of informational, persuasive opinion, and narrative pieces. So, but essentially for kindergarten, you know, these are the units we developed, first grade, these are the units we had times here. And we were really focused on within each cycle, the teachers would give a pre-assessment and a post-assessment using the same writing rubric. We also developed writing a writing instructional block because this did not look consistent from teacher to teacher, grade to grade. So we need some DOL grammar time. We need to do our writer's talk or quick write. We want to have our mini lesson. We want our independent writing time should be a bulk of the time because as we know, the more time students spend reading and writing, the bigger impact that will have on them, right? That developing their expertise in the area, giving them exposure. And then we always want to end our writing session with a sharing time, celebration time. And then this is the PD schedule that we came up with. Um, so we wanted to first go over guidelines for writer's workshop and then writing um, writer's notebook. So we wanted to do, we actually ended up doing I think a full day on this where we modeled different components of the writer's block. Then our next PD was going to be, oh this was combined, on pacing guides, writing binders, tools for planning. So yeah, this was our first day happening on August 4th. Then we wanted to talk about assessment part one. So assessment wasn't necessarily relevant here in the beginning of August, but since we started middle of August, assessment was more relevant here. So, um, you know, and then this, this PD was done whole group, whereas this PD was done in grade level teams. So we wanted to do PD on assessment, on using the rubrics, here we wanted to give a PD on inquiry and writing using model text. So that was going to be on um, October 1st for two to three hours. On October 22nd, we want to do conferring. On October 29th, we want to use um, data from conferences, how to use it, planning units of study. So these were all of the different topics we felt like the staff would need professional development on. And then when we had mapped out you know, to give those. And this is something you would ideally do at the beginning of the year so you can plan a very cohesive, focused year of professional development that isn't fragmented. The other thing I wanted to tell you about with this is that every Friday our students had early release, so they left school at 1, which enabled us to do a lot of great rich PD on Fridays. So Friday afternoons we typically did have PD, so that enabled a lot of time for this kind of learning to happen. And that could be something to think about as you're developing your recommendations for your school site. Is there a way that you can have more frequent PD? Because I know we've been reading many articles and there's a lot of research behind the need for developing teacher expertise and giving them those professional learning opportunities. All right, so that was my very rough professional development plan that I hadn't planned on showing you, but in talking about these different pieces, I think it always helps to, to see kind of a sample of, of what someone has done um, as far as following this process. But it is a great process to really think about, you know, what needs to be our focus as a school. This was our second year as a school, so we couldn't really focus on writing our first year as a school, so we focused it on our second and third years. And then what's going to be our, you know, end goal, our outcome that we want to see, you know, improvement on the school-based writing rubric we were using, all students getting fours, threes and fours, and then, you know, how are we going to get, get there with what professional development. All right, the last role of the specialist we're going to be talking about as we learn specialists wear many hats is that coaching role. And I know there's been a lot of questions and um, just information 
that you have wanted about coaching. So that's going to come through with assignment five. So you're going to be using your data analysis to decide who to coach and the area of focus. So we're kind of going to try to stimulate real life where we're going to pair teachers with data sets and you're going to have to dig in and, and see who is struggling with what and what kind of PD do you need to provide. What did the data reveal? Will one teacher be more receptive to coaching than another? What model of coaching will you use? I know Dr. Bowers always talks about her approach to coaching being humble pie. So with this approach, instead of coming in and saying, you know, you need coaching and I'm here to model this strategy for you, you would um, maybe say, you know, I am uh, working on my master's in reading or I'm, you know, trying to develop my repertoire of strategies for literacy instruction. And would it be okay if I came in and tried out uh, this technique with your students called XYZ? I'm going to come in on this time and try it out and maybe you could actually give me some feedback on how it goes. So they actually are uh, more invested in, in what you're doing and maybe more likely to to try out this strategy instead of you coming in and telling them that they need your help and you're you're going to make them do this strategy but helping them to see the value of the strategy in a different way so that is an approach she likes to use but we'll talk about others and then how will i measure my success as a coach good questions there so Assignments four and five are the big pieces we have to tackle next. There will be and are detailed directions for each assignment in those assignment resources. Um, assignment four, you will not be grouped, but I need to rework that assignment. And then assignment five is completed individually. So join me back as I'm going to talk about our content for the week. I will be actually doing lectures on the articles of the current week instead of the past week as a result of your feedback. It sounds like people would rather I do that than go back a week to lecture. So join me back as we talk about beating the odds.